Well, g'day, Curd Nerds. Today, we're making Robbiola. Now, Robbiola is a style of cheese, and it is from around the Torino area in Italy, and there are many, many variations. I've made one of those variations today, my own. Uh, so, some of the variations are Robbiola Rochetta, which is a triple milk cheese, so made from cow, goat, and sheep. And then there's uh, Robbiola di Rocca... Roccaverano, which is a PDO cheese, and that's a bloomy goat cheese, and that's eaten fresh within about 10 days. Then there's Robbiola di Bosco, which is a red mold ripened cheese, which is a combination of cow and sheep's milk. Then there's Robbiola La Contessa, which is a goat and cow's milk mix uh, Robbiola. And then finally, probably not finally, but there are, the final one I've got on my list is Robbiola de Buffalo, which is a buffalo milk bloomy uh, Robbiola. Now, the version I've stuck with is a very simple one. It is a fresh cheese made from uh, whole cow's milk pasteurized, unhomogenized milk, and it's very simple to make. I had a, one or two little issues during the make uh, where the cheese didn't want to come out of the little baskets that I was using, but uh, in the end, it seemed to work out okay, and I've got four amazing Robbiola cheeses right here uh, to taste. I'll taste one of them, and we'll see how we go. But anyway, let me show you how I made my version of that famous Italian cheese, Robbiola. So start off by sanitizing all of your equipment. I'm using a five liter bladder of pasteurized unhomogenized milk. The ingredients for Robbiola are five liters or 5.28 quarts of whole cow's milk, pasteurized and unhomogenized, one eighth of a teaspoon of Flora Danica, six drops of single strength liquid rennet diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, one eighth of a teaspoon of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, and an 18% saturated brine solution. So begin by heating your milk up in whatever method you choose. I'm using a precision cooker and a water bath to heat my milk. So heat the milk up to 22 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And we've reached the temperature already, so that's really good. And now we're going to add the calcium chloride. Just stir that through. and then add the starter culture. So yes, it, just checking, it is Floridanica indeed. And just get your teaspoon, make it level, and then just sprinkle that over the surface of the milk. So put the lid back on, and we're gonna allow the culture to rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later we're going to stir the culture into the milk with an up and down motion. Just check the temperature, yep, spot on. And we're going to allow the milk to ripen for four hours. So four hours later, just going to stir the cream back in. Check the temperature. Yep, fairly good. And now we're going to add the rennet. Just pour that in whilst you're stirring the milk. So stir for no more than one minute. So allow the milk to set for eight hours. This is a lactic set cheese, so it takes a long time. We only had six drops of rennet. So I'm just checking this after eight hours just to see how much whey is expelled 
And there's only a little bit on the surface there, so I want it to set a little bit better than that. They have separated slightly, but we're going to put the lid back on now. And we're going to allow it to set for a further 8 hours. So 16 hours in total. Now notice that I've kept it in the water bath just to make sure it's the right temperature. Now you can see a lot more whey has been expelled there. And that's perfect, that's what we want. So it's about a centimetre of whey or half an inch on top of the curds. So I'm just going to remove the heat. So take my precision cooker away and remove the water from the water bath. Now we're going to cut the curds into vertical columns only, about four centimetres apart or one and a half inches. So the larger the cut, the more moisture the curds will hold. And Robbiola is a fairly moist cheese. So I've done them into columns. So we're going to allow the curds to heal now for five minutes. So five minutes later, we're going to do the horizontal cuts, or as best we can. Uh, same distance apart, so just using your curd knife. And there we go, we've still got some big chunks there. So gently stir it. As this is a lactic set cheese, it does have a tendency to fracture. So gently stir and separate the curds. So I'm going to do a quick stir for a about 10 minutes now if you find them fracturing too easily then just calm down on the stirring so you could probably stir for about five minutes see it's starting to there so I slowed down so line your baskets with a loose weave cheesecloth if I'm using a medium-sized basket here and I cut a big square of cheesecloth into quarters now ladle the curds into the basket and don't add any extra baskets, just use all the curds up in those baskets as it drains away. Now it will take a little while to drain. And just keep topping them up as they drain away. And then use all the curds up. So drain for 30 minutes after you put the last of the curds in. Now you'll notice that the whey is running clear, so that's a good sign that you're doing everything right. Just fold the cloth over the top of the cheese. This helps uh, make a nice smoother surface on the cheese itself because it's very delicate. and then drain for a further one hour. Little parcels of cheese. So after that hour, I thought I might be able to take the uh, cheese out of the cloth. So I just checked the first one there. And it was a little bit too uh, delicate, so I decided not to and just wrapped it back up and then flipped it over. So I'm flipping them all over in their cloth and then drain for a further 90 minutes. So 90 minutes later, I'm going to attempt to take it out of the cloth again. So we're going to remove the cheese, uh, each cheese from its cloth and then pop it into the basket naked this one's a little bit flatter. Had a bit of trouble, so I decided to leave this one in the cloth. But the other three uh, certainly have been removed from the cloth now. So we're going to drain that for a further hour. So after the hour, we're going to remove each cheese and just flip them over in their baskets. A little bit tricky sometimes, but you can get the hang of it. Those are the three bigger ones, and then I took this one out of its cloth now. 
And once you've got them all back into the baskets, again, drain for 18 hours. Don't forget to put an umbrella on top. Keeps the beasties away. Alright, so we're all fully drained now. And they are firm, so pop them into your brine solution for 60 minutes. Just squeeze them all in there. They'll all fit. Lost a little bit of brine, but that's okay. There we go. Now, one hour of brining time for this cheese is perfect. I wouldn't do it any less or any more. They're very soft cheeses and they'll absorb the salt quite readily. So now we're going to remove the cheese from the brine and place them on a mat in a ripening box. So two per box because they are fairly wide. And we're going to ripen for five days at 13 Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit at 80% relative humidity and don't forget to turn daily. So without further ado, let's have a look at the final result. These have been aging for about five days in ripening boxes. So these are just plastic boxes with a little plastic mat in the bottom uh, to keep the humidity in and to help them dry out. Um, let's have a look, there's the two styles in this one. One is the, the larger one. This just uh, looks a bit wonky, but Get them out. There's a lot of whey in the bottom, and that's only after one day after I um, I drained it out yesterday. We'll see how that goes. <coughs> and let's take them off the board. So they're still fairly moist on the bottom. Uh, these cheeses probably could have air dried a little bit before we taste them, but hey, what the heck? They're dry on top. Um, and then there's the big flat one. Okay, let's try to give it a smell. Mm, it smells very milky. Uh, well, it's a fresh cheese. Now, you can, as I mentioned, all those different varieties of Robbiola. So you could age these longer and let them uh, grow a bloomy rind. However, you would have to add some Penicillium candidum into the, into the mix when you're making the cheese. Um, or you could let it turn into a washed rind cheese uh, by adding some brevi bacteria linens and washing the surface of the cheese. However, I haven't because I've gone for the fresh version of Robbiola. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to see what it tastes like um, for a lactic set cheese. I've got some crackers here. Good table cheese, apparently. A bit crumbly. That's a big wedge of cheese. You can see a little bit of a rind around it. Just a little, but as a fresh cheese, you know, what do you expect? Um, well, it's, it's too much. I'm getting too excited here. Oh, my God. All right, there we go. Uh, cheese for breakfast. righty yeah. I'll try a little bit by itself first. Mm. It's very nice. Um, very smooth paste, very fresh. That um, one hour of brining was perfect. I wouldn't brine it any less or any more. The salt content of the cheese is spot on. So that, that's a bonus. That's good. Um, yeah, very milky, creamy. A uh, little bit of a tang there from the starter culture, starting to develop some acid within the cheese. So, very nice. Um, let's try it with a cracker. Mmm. Very nice. I like that. It's very mild, but it's got that subtle acidity, which... It's beautiful in these fresh shorter cheeses. Mm. There you go. So that's Robbiola. Uh, milky, fresh, slight acidity, nice saltiness to it. 
But as far as a fresh cheese goes, you couldn't do much better because really, uh, as a farmhouse cheese, you want something nice and quick. So fully matured within five days and you're right to go. Um, you serve this up on a cheese platter, no problems at all. So really good. So Robbiola, so that's my take on it. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to buy the ingredients to make this cheese, pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au and pick them up. So I'll also put in a recipe card down in the description so you can make this cheese at your leisure with a printed copy. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.